Someone had a request on the uh, aggressive behavior of uh, iguanas during breeding season. This is, and this is now breeding season, and I just want to congratulate y'all who have an iguana whose breeding size. And generally, that's somewhere between 9, 10 inches from nose to vent. <clears throat> and uh, because a lot of people start off with small, they get a little bigger. And once they get about this size, especially when they're adolescent, uh, sub adult iguanas, they are a bit. Uh, they're, they're a little bit more aggressive than when, once they are when they get older. And so right now, if you're having your first breeding season, you're gonna see a lot more active behavior than you do with an older one. That's my experience. That's what I'm gonna say here. I wanted to <clears throat> say you're gonna see a lot of uh, trying to get out of their enclosure, a lot of wanting to move around a lot, restlessness. You'll experience the loss of appetite at times. Some do, some don't. Not all of my iguanas stop eating during this, uh, this uh, period. They, some eat just fine and some don't. And, but they also do that sometimes during shedding, sometimes not. Sometimes in a drop of temperature. And there's lots of reasons why iguana will not eat for, you know, really just bites at a time for a couple of weeks, if not a little longer sometimes. So let's take a look at Buddy. Right now we're at, it's uh, no November the 10th, 19, God, 19, 2019. <clears throat> and so we're getting into the peak uh, breeding season here in the next week or two when so it really picks up. If not, even closer to November, I mean December is when I probably the most of it goes on. I've only, the farthest apart two females are going to lay eggs is about three weeks. So I'm figuring somewhere really between that's uh, one of the, that's I mean he really looks cute. He's just standing there watching me. But this is actually my most skittish male, adult male. The last video I wasn't able to get him out of cage. I probably could have forced him. Uh, but Buddy's named Buddy because he's my little buddy, but this time of year not so much. Let's see what we got. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. This could go horribly wrong for me. All right. So this is Buddy. See how regal Buddy is? He can jump out of my arms any second. I feel him breathing a little bit. A little harder. Buddy is only about three years old. Now I got the other male in front of me right here, but... I can do this, but once he opens his eyes and realizes that he's not in his cage and I'm not petting him inside his cage, he freaks out. Like, now he don't get aggressive, he just wants to run. Like one is that want to run in your arms leads to uh, lacerations, like not little scratches. I do keep his nails trimmed fairly bit, so I'm fairly safe with this. I want to switch him over to my other arm. The other one doesn't seem too happy right there. This is a good look at Buddy. He's a big boy. This is my big red. If, what she, she can do to help her iguana deal with the aggression and ask if, you know, let, it, let the iguana roam. Yeah, of course. You can always allow your iguana roam as long as you're supervising at all times. They climb curtains, they climb bookshelves, they climb anything. The iguana wants to be higher than anything else, naturally. When you hold baby iguanas, you know, if you put your hand up like this, they'll climb this way, you know. And so they just naturally want to be above everything. That's where they feel the safest. That's why anybody with a brand new iguana, make sure that it's at eye level. And try to get it up on a higher shelf and feel much more comfortable than if it was on the ground, you know. But also, we're trying to stay on topic. So, also, I've seen, I haven't personally witnessed this because as someone with many iguanas, 
I don't necessarily have the same issues if I just have one iguana, so I gotta handle it a little differently. But plush lizard green iguana toys for male iguanas as a substitute as a breeding partner. Luckily, they're not the most intelligent animal. A lot of times iguanas act instinctively and not so much really working it out like you would see monitors and, and, and even snakes. You know, I'm not saying that the iguana is dumb, but they have a more primitive, instinctive mindset. You know, things are based off fear, you know, and they're not gonna sit there and problem solve. I you know how many times I've seen them trying to go up the same side of the wall with no ladder when the ladder is just across the cage. They can walk up it. I just, I don't know. They're just not super intelligent. Not to say they're not personable. Like this guy right here is showing right now. He's kind of curious and wants to see what I'm doing. But I've seen it happening. You can YouTube it and plush toys are uh, could be beneficial to help get some of that uh, frustration out. But what you'll see in your now sub-adult to adult iguana is that they're turning more orange. You see a lot of orange. There's a lot of uh, there's me medical names for what happens there with the chemistry. Even the females turn orange. And I can show you that with my blue one or the green one. Let me show you my blue female. See, orange tips in her spines, orange in her arms. She, uh, actually I see a lot of aggression in the females towards other females during this time as well. And uh, you know, she's bred several years, that's why you see some of the spines missing. And it's a little aggressive and there's ways to prevent that too. If you had all the time in the world, uh, Covering up on the sock, maybe sometimes help. But considering I don't know exactly when they're ready to do that, I'd have to be doing it every evening for a month. And I just don't really have the time for that. But I got her, she wasn't in the greatest shape. I got her, I think she was, they always told she was around two years old. So she's about six years old now. But the point is, if you can see the orange and her blue, and unfortunately she lost a lot of her blue, she had a lot of blue still left on her belly. And this is the mother to all the uh, blue young I've had this year and the one that I had the year before last. So I do see a lot of aggression with females. So it's just not the males that get, because females compete for nesting spots. And uh, they like that, but there's a little bit, see the orange around her mouth right there? Her eyes get a little bit more orange and there's orange in her arms. But she's a true azanthic iguana. And for the most part, really easy to handle. She's a little skittish right now. I do have her in there with little boy blue. And that should be really nice because hopefully with his lack of pattern or very fine stripes and her a lot of pattern, but much bluer color, hopefully I can breed out the pattern and have a more solid blue over time. That's the plan with that, the plan with that project there. And now, come out. My adolescents over here are having a pool party. Oh, sorry, catch up. I swear, they were both flashing. She wasn't happy to come out. Let's see my adolescents. That is freshly cleaned water. And I gotta clean it. It's like they wait. They're having a pool party, slinging water everywhere. And that's this guy, I just, I swear to God, I just cleaned it three hours ago. The sign that your uh, male iguana is ready to breed. You, know, you have the uh, little temperament, uh, orange color, a lot of flaring with the dewlap. And also you have sperm plugs and he'll lay those around. And scent marking, uh, allowing other females to see where it's coming from and whatnot and they will follow that through. And a sperm plug is a white goo left on its perch or in the water or after it has a uh, bowel movement. But he's, he's really going off over here. It's just so nice to look at him and now that they're of age. You know, little, little boy blue there is about four years old. Good size. Nice uh, do lab. And this will be his first year of breeding. I haven't had, really wasn't sure what to do with that project until I got 
breeding out of the way for the uh, snow project I had. So I've got, okay, so with that being said, I'm not really sure more I can offer as far as what to do with your aggressive iguana. Some get, I mean, they get, I guess a lot get more aggressive than what I see here. I've had them whip at me, but I, I really wasn't sure if I just surprised one. I, I mean, they're all a little bit more temperamental. You just gotta be a little bit more careful around them and more observant about body behavior or body language. So you know, hey, he doesn't want to be messed with or it smells not. I also do know and research, I haven't seen it firsthand, but when I was studying it, iguanas before I started my whole breeding projects was that they also will uh, detect women as being women and may try to be aggressive and biting and mounting and that's just a natural way that iguanas breed just human females don't have scales to protect them from that bite. While I'm out here let's see if we can get Skippy out. All right, even a hypo iguana. Oh, I haven't cut his nails in a while. All right, even a hypo iguana gets orange. He got a little face rub on him. I gotta watch these cages. But not sure how old he is. Remember, Skippy lost his baby because someone prematurely put him in with a large female. And, uh, now he doesn't want to be held right now. I think I'm a little close to the. Uh, so hopefully that helps you with the uh, aggressive. I mean, there's not a lot that I can say that will help anybody that has one running around the house and you're worried about it biting your ear off. Don't let it get near your ears or your face. You know, pay attention to your iguana. Know your iguana. If you've had it as long as you know, it should take you know nine to ten inches from nose event would probably take somewhere around 16, 18 months. That, that so before they're two years old. The males would definitely be acting, you know, in the uh, way of uh, ready to breed. Females, they grow fast enough. They'll be, they'll lay eggs that next, uh, come that spring. And uh, I've had very, actually my albino from last year is only nine inches from nose, uh, nine inches from nose to vent and laid 20 something eggs on me. And I didn't even realize it. I just thought she was gaining a little weight. If you just keep Keep offering food. Make sure to get water. When your iguanas stop eating, they're not taking as much moisture. Get a lot of, they get most of their moisture from their food. And you may have to spray for a minute. Make sure it's not too cold because when the water's too cold, it will startle them for one and it takes them a little longer to realize what's going on or they just want to get away from the cold water if it's cold. I do a lukewarm spray when the ambient temperatures are a little cooler than normal, but in the summertime when it's over 95 inside my room, not counting the 110, 115 a basking spot could be, cold water's all right. There's, you know, it, if you bring it on, to, just don't sit there and squirt right directly into their face. Give them a second to realize, all right, it's spray time. And you, and you keep spraying them until they drink. And that sometimes can take a minute because, you know, if they're in a cage, and I get, and I make it a routine. It's a routine. Iguanas need routine. Sometimes you change things up. I wear mostly blue around my iguanas. That's how they see me. I, before I come into the room, I announce myself. Hey guys, what's up? The same way I start these videos. And so they, they hear audibly. Okay, it's that guy that gives us food and water. Let's see. But so I came in with uh, kind of a Western style uh, checkered plaid type shirt, they didn't recognize me. I could tell in their eyes and their body movements and started getting a little jerky, they didn't even recognize me. It wasn't until I got messing around, but it still wasn't quite sure. So I've had actually real good uh, luck with pink. Pink seems to be all right color and it doesn't it doesn't seem to bother them, but because it, my work shirts are blue, normally I like to be out here, white's okay, but it depends on what, if I'll try to handle them, if I'm handling them and, and stuff, I do wear blue, uh, white, pink, you know, it's all right when I'm just feeding and, and watering or cleaning out cages. But if I'm trying to get intimate with the animal and, you know, real hands-on and get them used to what they are to see, it's usually blue. And that's what I kind of stick with as far as that. I wish everybody the best of luck this year. They're, they're uh, semi-aggressive, maybe aggressive. Not sure what to think. He's just moody or she's just moody. You know, like I said, offering plenty of food. You know, even though they're not hungry, you know, just decrease the amount that you offer them. 
And once they start eating all that, start adding to that to the point where there's a little bit left over for them throughout the day. Make sure there's plenty of water. You can spray your food with plenty of water so there's dew on it and whatnot. Offer them their favorite treats, strawberries, bananas, grapes, things of that nature. You can even put the strawberries and grapes and stuff, the stuff that re they really like into a small dish of water. So when they're eating that, they're taking in some water in that way. Because really, my, my biggest trouble is keeping everybody hydrated this time of year. With the heat running continuously, my humidity drops 30, 40% out here. That's why I try not to circulate too much air in and out of this building. I would say that's probably about 85 degrees right now. It's 60% humidity, which is good. Now come tomorrow and the next day when it's getting below 30 degrees outside, I expect my ambient temperatures to probably drop just below 75, but the humidity will be not even on the chart because the heater will run 24 seven during that time. So I wish all y'all the best of luck. Thank all my new subscribers and I appreciate every single one of you. I think there's 257. I never thought I'd even get that. So it just makes me happy that we're uh, moving along and we're growing and learning. And if there's any input, if those of you who are watching this video, please put it down in the comments because you may have something to offer that, I, I mean, that I haven't brought up. That this is how I'm handling it. I, I really didn't start this to really do a whole lot of how-tos and stuff, but I'm more than willing to help. I just don't, there's some people who really, I don't know, do better at describing what they do or whatnot. I just have a bunch of iguanas and learn trial and error. So all right, all y'all have a good day and catch y'all next time.